Okay. Excellent. Well, many thanks to Norman for coming along and giving us a talk. Um, really keen to hear about this. Really keen. Um, don't know anything about you. Don't think any of us know anything about you. So if you can give us a wee introduction on who you are and what your background is, that would be great. Okay, yeah. sure. Um, Excited to hear the talk. Thanks a lot. Norman Stewart, uh, along the west side of Edinburgh. A kilometre south of uh, Edinburgh Zoo, Christophan. Uh, first licence, 1983, with Golf Mike One Charlie November Hotel. But 15 years later, eventually got up to 12 words per minute. And uh, also got the call sign, Mike Mike Zero Bravo Mike Golf. I uh, also called the uh, Edinburgh District Amateur Radio Club call, GS4HAM. Okay. Uh, I've got a couple of uh, Colombian calls, which we'll, we'll see what we'll we'll about. Cool. Uh, mainly, mainly VHF, UHF operating. Uh, I do dabble a bit in HF as well. Uh, got a reasonable setup at uh, home, but the location's not ideal in the city. It's just uh, swamped with QRM. Mm -hmm. Not all the time, but a lot of the time. Not as bad as some people, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, it's just the way things go. Uh, and um, I've got to soften hill to the north, so wipes out that, that sort of sector. Uh, west, it's rising ground, but not too bad in Gauta, went Livingston. Uh, bits of Bathgate. Uh, you get to the south of Edinburgh, no problem. Over, over the, the Pentland Hills, it'll be a bit more tricky, but you can do it. And to the east, it is uh, a bit clear as well. Cool, let's dive in. I will dive in, yes. Um, anyone been to Colombia? No. Anyone been to South America? Yeah. Ah, good. Where, where about? Brazil. Brazil, okay, that's just down the road a bit and to the east. <laughs> um, yourself? Close enough. I was basically in Mexico, but right down the south of it. So. Oh, it's yeah. kind of North America. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, Doesn't it cool? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyone else? No? I did Bolivia and Peru. Okay, so that's, yeah. Um, Peru's yeah, the that's southwest, yeah. Bolivia's further south. Mm. But we'll see a bit of that mm. uh, later on. This is an annoying feature. That's it. I'll just unplug that later. Um, ¿Quién habla español? Sí. No? Suficiente para mantener una conversación con los locales normalmente cuando estoy de vacaciones. Hablo muy poco, aprendo. Ok. Resos. So, did you learn good English? Uh, did, did you learn European Spanish or Latin Spanish? Okay, so there's a few differences that I'll only be mentioned a little bit uh, about that. So I've kind of been learning, uh, well, in, in Scotland, to attend all the books are geared up for European uh, uh, Spanish, but Latin American Spanish is a little bit different. I've done some, I had a similar teacher at one point as well. So. Oh, all right, okay. Everybody know what this Colombian flag looks like? Yeah, yep, you do now. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful though, the Venezuelan flag and the Ecuador flag are very similar. Yeah, right. Venezuelan has, I think it's five stars and an arc and the yellow bit. <laughs> and the Ecuadorian flag is a motif in the centre. But otherwise, same colours. <laughs> If you only leave here with one thing tonight, this is this is what I want you to remember, okay? It's not Colombia, it's Colombia. Yeah. I got into trouble. <laughs> Learned my mistake. So I think Colombia. I wrote that in the email tonight to these lot. Reminded them I think I've put Colombia. Sure Colombia is in North America, Colombia is in South America. Yeah, okay, so Colombia. So what I will go through, this is as much a geography lesson, culture lesson as is, as it is uh, anything to do with uh, radio. <coughs> uh, this one, this, I'll just cancel that. Uh, right, 
and the, and the effects of that sort of teaching. So we'll talk about country culture, how you get there, should you decide you want to go, maybe not after what I'm going to tell you. <laughs> uh, and if you do want to go, I'll tell you how to get a Colombian license. Reasonably straightforward. However, the application is all in Spanish, so and I'll tell, show you a little bit about some of the operating I've done, which wasn't much, but anyway. It's the most northern country in <coughs> South America. It has both the Atlantic and Pacific coastline. The Atlantic coastline is the south of the Caribbean. People often ask me, well, what is the climate like? And well, it depends. It depends whether you're in the Amazonian region, which is hot and 100% humidity. Coastal regions, hot. They'll still, still be quite uh, humid. Uh, coastal regions, you're looking at maybe 35 to 40 centigrade. The humidity can be quite high as well. But if you're up the mountains, it's a lot drier. It's also cooler. So uh, typically Bogota, which is the capital, you look at maybe at night time, it's down to maybe 10 centigrade. During the day, it can be up to 21, 22. I'm going to pull this dry card out, hopefully. Nothing will break. I should stop that the detailed message. So where is Colombia? Well, as I said, it's in the north part of South America. It's bordered to the north by Panama, Venezuela here, Brazil here, Ecuador here, and Peru here. So it's surrounded by quite a few countries. And as you can see, we've got the Atlantic coastline up here and the uh, Pacific coastline here. There's also a small island that belongs to Colombia, San Andres. Uh, San Andres, which is in, it's in here somewhere. I'm going to see it on the next uh, slide a bit better. So the capital, Bogota is in the middle. But this bit here is probably not too clear, but this is the Andes, because all up the, the west coast of South America. Mm -hmm. so Bogota is pretty much uh, up there and amongst it all. Down here is the Amazonia region. Uh, other major cities you may, may have heard of, uh, Medellin and uh, Cartagena, Cali, you might have heard of some of those, Buru. <coughs> Population, it's about 50 million. Uh, at the moment, it's probably got another one and a half million Venezuelans in it. Yeah. Venezuela's in a bit of a state. They've had been like that for quite a few years. It's uh, got quite a bit worse in the last four or five years. Uh, so there's about one and a half million Venezuelans in Colombia, and about a million of those are in the capital, Bogota. Bogota, it's four degrees north of the equator, so it's pretty pretty central in the in terms of the the, the, uh, the globe. It's at an altitude of eight thousand, just over eight and a half thousand feet. And up at that kind of altitude, you've got twenty percent. You're down to about eight hundred, eight hundred millibars. And what that means is, there's twenty less. 20% less oxygen going into your lungs. Now, the first time I went there, it was about 10 years ago, stepped off the plane, no problem. I went up six stairs and I got to the fourth step and I was, I was out of breath, I was knackered. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was, mm -hmm. I was cl clinging on to the side. Uh, it just hits you really fast. I don't know if anybody's had experienced high altitude. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's not that high, but for, for a sort of uh, sea level dweller, it, you notice it. Getting around in the capital, well, the capital's got a population of eight, officially 8 million, but it's probably nearer 10 by the time you add in all the undocumented people that are there and the uh, Venezuelans. Getting around, 
Uh, it's a pretty jam-packed uh, city. Taxis are plentiful and cheap. They're, they're, <clears throat> they tend to be very small cars, like Hyundai i tens or something like that, that kind of size. So they're not big, but they are cheap. I mean, uh, uh, you're talking about two or three pound to go, maybe five kilometres, three miles. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know about here, but in Edinburgh, as soon as you open the door and sit down, there's a tenner on the meter, mm -hmm. <laughs> or not far off it. Yeah. <laughs> so, but they're not cheap. But there is a lot of traffic jams, and it may not all, always be the, uh, the best way to get around. Oops, let's go back a bit. A faster way is this Transmillennial, which is basically uh, Mercedes Bendy buses. You've probably seen them in other cities. And they have special bus lanes that only these transmillennial buses can go in. No taxis, no bicycles, uh, not even normal buses, only the transmillennial. So it does by zip up and down and miss a lot of the traffic jams. So that is the quickest way uh, of getting around. I'm sure it's not unique. I think, I think Paris um, Underground is pretty famous for this. <laughs> uh, somebody did try to pick my pocket once. But, uh, I, I don't know who it was at the time. I, just, I could feel the finger going in my back pocket. I didn't have anything in there. I just grabbed the finger, twisted it, and heard a yelp. <laughs> and I turned around. It was an old boy, luckily enough. But the, the, the bus that was packed. And I, and I just I stared at him and I stared at him and he, he got off at the mm. stop. So. Second city, Medellin. So somebody mentioned uh, Narcos, series one. It was all filmed, well, I think a lot of it was filmed in there actually. It was all based there. The character Pablo Escobar. So I'm sure you all know what that was about. In fact, there's been loads of programs about them. Uh, even in Colombia, there's, every year there's another, another version of his life, or his brother, or his sister, or, or whoever. Official language is Spanish. Uh, however, according to Wikipedia, 68 regional ethnic languages, it's quite a lot. Uh, I mentioned San Andres, which is this uh, island further to the north in the Caribbean. Uh, for some strange reason, English is also an official language there. Unlike Spain, where if you go to Spain, you probably find about half, at least half the people, especially all the young people, will speak at least some English. You go to South America, no. Big cities, maybe you yeah, find some people in the bigger hotels, the bigger fancy restaurants, but out and about, no, 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 no one speaks English. So, if you know a few words, uh, you will it will help you get along. So here's a here's a typical. Uh, this is Bogota, and uh, this road here. This is probably further south. But further to the north, this is uh, Autopista Norte. Further to the north, it's got six lanes in here and three feeder lanes. These are feeder lanes. So all your sort of shops and things and houses is, is along here. Uh, and then this is the main, if you like, the sort of urban motorway. Uh, but there probably was a third feeder lane here, but it's been extended into a, a cycleway, cycle path. Uh, and there's the little uh, yellow taxis. So you can see that they're quite small, small cars. <coughs> oh, one other thing. Um, back. So this, this is sort of north, and you can see as uh, it's mountains. Bogota itself, the city, it's in a sort of like a plain, eight and a half thousand feet up, it's surrounded by mountains that are. 10,000 feet plus uh, on, on two sides. So that's the north of the city. This is um, this photograph was taken from my sister in law's uh, terrace. She lives in the south. Uh, generally, the best bit if you're a tourist, you want to keep to the north. 
the north of Bogota. Probably won't have ventured too far into the south, <laughs> and certainly not into the south. Um, Bogota, uh, Barrios, because uh, Gringo wandering around there on his own is just going to disappear. <laughs> 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 okay, and, and I know saying that with a bit of a joke, but but seriously, yes, <laughs> all uh, the work disappeared. Uh, that, that'll be the last note I'll ever see here from you again. Uh, so you can see typical houses. They're, they're not generally they're not that well made. The the brickwork, the, the bricks that you use are tend to be hollow, so they've not got very high strength. Uh, and they're quite flimsy in standard buildings. Uh, a bit uh, a bit shoddy. Which is surprising because they, they do get a lot of earthquakes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was there one year. <clears throat> experienced my first ever earthquake which was 6.4 and you certainly know that mm. the, the ground kind of shakes like this and it's yeah it was almost strong enough to drop off my feet right. Right. i've never seen so many people come out of buildings to fasten my life uh mm. they're used to it they know what to do as soon as things start shaking you get out mm. get in the middle of the street those buildings fall down bits fall off buildings so you all go in the middle of the street mm. uh, so that that was a an experience but Luckily, luckily, it wasn't uh, for me. My family it wasn't any problems, and the, the place where we were staying was okay. But the, the, the standard of building is not very good, and neither is the standard of electrical safety, which we'll see a bit more of that later. And I'll explain why. Yeah, hint to that already because the wires and stuff going along. It's a mess. <laughs> uh, this country is really good we put all our telephone, cables, electrics, everything was underground, but there it doesn't. You've got, um, we'll just go back to that one. Probably, yeah, no, this is, this is probably just um, what we call low voltage, 120 volts AC, but there'll be other areas where we're, at the bottom you've got low voltage, and at the top, higher up, you've got the high voltage. <laughs> Uh, it's a mess. There's, there's wires, cables, all oh, it's, it's a mess. Um, as well as earthquakes, they, they get some heavy rain at times, uh, very heavy, uh, proper rain, <laughs> equatorial rain, and uh, the sparky stuff as well. And mm -hmm. um, my, my wife, uh, she's Colombian, and she says, oh, you've got to be careful when uh, you get heavy rain and the lightning, because the things on the poles explode. I didn't know what she was talking about. Mm. It was the uh, high voltage to low voltage transformers. Mm. They get hit because this is all exposed. They're very, I don't think the lightning protection is very good. Hits the lightning, the transformers, boom. <laughs> so, mm. partly when there's lightning, you don't go standing underneath these uh, mm. poles. <laughs> oh, one other thing. <clears throat> I'll go back. Penny little cars parked in the street because people keep their cars in the, the sort of ground floor. It's, I think we call them the city houses or something. There. There's a name for them. You have a garage built into your ground floor. Townhouse. Oh, townhouse, that's it. So it, no, nobody leaves their cars parked on the street because they'll disappear. <laughs> <laughs> they, they just disappear. Or the, the wheels are gone or all the bits that are useful will be gone, the catalysts, whatever. So that's why the street's almost empty. I like them, bro. Mm. But the still is probably the same. Mm. Second city, Medellin. Probably not too clear here, but this is uh, Barrios away up the, the side of the mountain. Medellin's um, a bit warmer. It's probably around about 25, typically. Uh, but it's a lot lower down. It's only about 2,500 feet. And uh, those that have watched Narcos might or might not recognise some of the areas uh, in there. I've got another picture. So this is the, what the barrios look like close up. There's a gondola system that goes up the mountain and over. Uh, Medellin's got a couple of them, and I was on that, so it's certainly um, I, I wouldn't be wandering around here. <laughs> My wife would get away with it. I wouldn't. <laughs> okay. Uh, Again, the, 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 these houses are clinging on to the, the side of the mountain. Oh, 
Okay, the couple says Colombian, Colum, Colombian peso, uh, or COP, under the international code. Uh, one pound will buy about 5,000 COP, Colombian pesos. So yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's easy to be a millionaire, I've got a million mm -hmm. pesos in my back pocket. <laughs> it's about, it's not, it's not much. What would that buy you? 5,000, what would that buy you then? In the shop? 5,000 Colombian pesos will buy you um, can I probably a, a pizza. All right. Uh, or two glasses of fresh fruit juice, mm. uh, and I'm talking the, f the food uh, is really good over there. Uh, you buy fruit juice, what they do is they'll take the, they want strawberry juice, they'll get strawberries, liquidize them, crushed ice in the, in the glass, maybe have a bit of sugar if you want it, and that's it. You get fresh juice mm. for about 50, 60 pence. Mm. Wow. <laughs> uh, you bought that here, you're paying about a fiver for fresh fruit juice. And I'm not talking about the fresh orange, the alleged fresh <laughs> orange sale at the pubs, which isn't as fresh as two years ago. How much is it for beer? Beer's pretty cheap as well. They've uh, got three main brands as well Aguila, which I didn't touch, it was the cheapest. <laughs> so the next one was Poker, which all my relatives over there seem to drink. But the most expensive one, so I kind of last on that one is. Club Colombia uh, for a bottle uh, three seven, three seven five milliliters or standard bottle You're probably looking about two two pound two fifty mm. better than that uh, went to a some medium class restaurant no, not not the top end but some medium I had a fillet steak with some trimmings. That was, and this wasn't a, a six ounce full estate, it's a 12 ounce, a proper one. Mm -hmm. 27,000 pesos. So it's about six quid. Mm -hmm. I couldn't buy that out of Tesco. <laughs> For six quid. The time zone, they're about five hours behind us right now. In the summer, they're six hours behind us. And they don't do daylight saving because they're so near the equator, there's yeah, nothing to gain from that. Yeah. Do it. uh, it's also the uh, time for uh, New York, it's almost about five hours behind. <clears throat> so, the International Standard Code CO or COL driving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm often asked, well, did, did they drive on the left or the right? And I'll say, well, Mainly on the right, however, some drive on the left and others don't care where they drive. <laughs> I'm not joking. It's, I don't know if anybody's driven in Paris or Rome, mm. no, no. Bogota, order magnitude better or worse, mm. depending on the <laughs> viewpoint. Uh, it's quite scary actually. Um, a lot of traffic accidents, a lot of traffic deaths. Surprisingly though, even on the top motorways, maximum speed is only 80 kilometers an hour, 50 miles an hour. Most people nah, don't care. Yeah. <laughs> they don't have a road tax, but they have road tolls. If, if nearly everywhere you go, unless you're going really, really in the back roads, uh, I'll talk about that later as well. Um, there's toll charges. It uh, can, can be quite expensive for the average Colombian. Everything's quite cheap out there, food. It's very cheap. One thing that is very expensive, believe it or not, if you buy a bottle of wine from I don't know, Chile or Argentina, it costs a fortune. It's about £10 for something you can buy at Tesco for five or six pounds. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of tax on it because it's imported. Anything that's imported in Colombia is quite a high tax. Mm -hmm. So foreign wine, foreign beers, mm -hmm. uh, Nikes, Unless they're made in Colombia, you, you, you know, you're paying a whack for them, you buy them here. Uh, yeah, I mentioned this uh, earlier, Autopista Norte in Bogota. It, uh, it's widest point, it's six lanes plus three feet of lanes. Uh, as you go further into the centre, uh, it kind of grinds to halt and there's usually traffic jams all over the place. There's an interesting road uh, 
which I've driven a couple of times now, <laughs> uh, from Bogota to Armenia. Armenia is the, it's one of the coffee regions, it's a good, good place to go, you know, coffee parks and all sorts of theme parks and stuff, it's quite touristy. Uh, however, the, the, this road, uh, even looking on it on a map, it kind of goes like this and this. But what the map doesn't tell you is it's also doing this and this because yeah. you're up and down mountains and over uh, traverses. And um, I, I don't know if you ever saw, I think it was Romancing the Stone. And there was, I think that was set in Colombia. And they're on this clapped out bus and they're sort of driving around, clinging to the side of the mountain. And there's a goat on there and a box of chickens. Well, I've been on that bus. <laughs> the, the goat water wasn't on it, but it was a, it was a box of cream which, or a cage with two chickens. And the, the bus was, oh, anyway, so it's, it's all part of the experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the, this this road, uh, uh, and they've got big lorries, articulated lorries. And the, the bends, uh, so you come around a bend and it's, you go up a hill at the same time, because of the articulation, a lot of them swing away out to swing away in and you get there's a big queue because they're, they're only going up about up these mountains about five ten miles ten kilometers an hour they go really slow mm. because they're quite steep and there's people all trying to overtake and uh, it's just crazy uh, and you got almost vertical drops on the side it's it's, it's quite a bit of nerve to drive those roads uh my wife says well, we shouldn't really be driving them we should, Get an internal flight or something, but uh, again, this is all part of the experience. You do it, you do it once. Mm -hmm. Tourism. Um, you've probably got your own uh, idea of what Colombia is and what it's about, but actually, if you go to the touristic areas, you can have a really good time. It's really good. I've been in four-star hotels that, that were more like five-star hotels. The level of service, the food, everything's excellent. Way better than a four-star hotel here or in Europe. And, and three-star hotels were more like a four-star hotel. So if you go to the two stadiums, it's very good. So this is like um, maybe a finca that's been converted into like a bed and breakfast that I've stayed here. So there'll be a number of rooms. And uh, very clean, they're looked after, good food. So here we are, one uh, gringo tourist in the uh, Colombian uh, Caribbean. It's better, you can't see it here, but <laughs> it's, it, it's a lot of those kind of um, light cloud. Uh, it's hot, it's probably about 38 centigrade. And it's very humid as well. Because of the heat, the, the water just keeps evaporating. Mm. And it's just, everything's just really humid. You always, you're always feeling sticky. All the time, uh, and it's good to get into the uh, the water for swimming. And uh, the shallows, it just feels like going into a bath. It's really good. It's far warmer than the Mediterranean. It's uh, it's great. <laughs> so you get a few of these characters. Anyone know what that is? Iguana. So the Spanish for iguana is iguana. Right, so we've learned a word already. <laughs> we've learned a first Spanish word, great. We're on a roll. Um, they're, they're kind of, they, they can go from nose to tail, they can be over two meters long, and uh, they've got big teeth. And uh, they, 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 they live in the trees, they're good swimmers as well. So you have to be careful, they, they won't, um, they probably won't bite you unless you're having a go at them or something. Though. Quite but, um, they are, but I, it's not the kind of teeth I associate with a vegetarian, <laughs> more like a shark, so it's, uh, the, 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 um, I don't know, these are sharp, pointy teeth, <laughs> I, I don't know, um, I suspect they might eat the odd fish or something as well, uh, you do get vegetarian iguanas, is it on the Galapagos, they eat seaweed or something, but no, I, th I think these ones will eat, they the were eating more bananas and fruits and things people would throw out to them. People keep them on them. But you keep them as pets, yeah. They tend to be vegetables. But you can't, they'll probably eat fish, small mice or something, other things. Dogs and cats. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, it's not something you want to put my finger at. 
one of, uh, this is in the this, again this is in the uh, Caribbean the Atlantic coast this is a beach called uh, Taganga and it's great and I'll tell you why the only way into here is by boat you get on a little boat life jacket on take you around and they take you to the beach it's not a private beach it's just hard to get to and they, these are all sort of like restaurants and uh, there's barbecued rice fish uh, or barbecued chicken uh, you get and it's pretty good food but the best thing is because it's hard to get to you don't get harassed if you go to one of the main towns uh like um santa marta you know, on the beach there every two minutes you get something trying to peddle you cheap jewelry <laughs> or some woman wanting to give you a massage <laughs> or oh. something else selling you fruit or and it's, it's constant 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 and it's really irritating uh, but here no don't get any of that it's great you can't see it but there's a lot of people it's really warm it's just like as i said just like in your bath at home you can see it but they they're, they're all wearing the t-shirts sunblock is very expensive uh, so they wear t-shirts to help stop themselves getting bumped it's kind of green and murky isn't it? that's not what i expected it's maybe the lighting it's not a, i mean it's not a bright day it's a bit slightly over overcast mm. uh yeah, yeah, an image of what the caribbean looks like then and the... yeah there you are expect crystal clear yeah point. uh it's just not that far off i mean there, there is a bit of a, a tiny 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 swell there mm. so it kind of obscures the bottom but the, you can do scuba or um can, there is a scuba diving school quite near here if you're into that uh, and they also locals all red to flippers and masks and you can go snorkeling mm. and they've got little bits of coral as well you can go down and what lots of sea fish it's, it's quite good mm. this uh, big sandy beach this is lago lago tota in boyaca department looks nice and warm it's not it's, it's just over ten thousand feet yeah. it's uh quite cool it's maybe 10 probably doesn't get much more than 15 on a hot day all the sand thin atmosphere you will burn in like two or three minutes yeah. uv is very high the higher you go, the more you've eaten. It doesn't go up linearly, I think like it's a kind of a non-linear. You can cook very quickly. Get mosquitoes. Uh, when I first went, oh, I went for, I got, before I went, I got all sorts of uh, jabs. They were like COVID and flu. I was getting yellow fever and hepatitis B and mumps measles about ah oh, jeez arms were knackered mm. before i went and then i had to get um well, malaria tablets as well this is cartagena uh, and i was on the tour bus and uh you know press the to tour all the languages choose english and blah 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 and the the pirate uh, Fran uh, francis drake laid siege to cartagena apparently <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember him being called the pirate yeah, here. No. Anyway. <laughs> Different perspective. Um, anybody see anything interesting in that photograph? Yeah, fall cloud. Yeah. See this? Mm -hmm. It's a water spout. So it's like a small tornado over the over the water. Uh, and it started getting darker. And that would be wrong. This is this was a, there was a castle right in the centre, and it's a high sort of rock. And this photograph was taken from there. And it just started to get darker and darker we thought yeah let's, let's get out of here before the, the rain starts because rain in colombia is serious stuff uh, uh and we, we, we did we just got out and just as we go back to the taxi and the taxi whoosh and uh, it's proper proper rain they have none of this weak stuff we have over here yeah driving back to driving the very first time uh, I went there, 2010, uh, I just hired a small cheap car just to get around. The roads are not good. 
the um, even the good roads aren't good because they get a lot of rain, they get a lot of um, earthquakes, they get a lot of landslide, mudslides. A road, a really good road that was there one day, it's just gone the next, and they're always repairing them. Second reason you might want to go for a four wheel drive is um, a lot of the other roads, uh, they're not metal, they're not tarmac adding or metal or anything, it's just dirt roads. Uh, so normal cars just get knackered. So I learned an important lesson. Um, I'll pay the extra money and I'll get a decent four wheel drive and I'll get a silly wee car again. Petrol's very cheap over there. Uh, it's probably 10,000 pesos for a uh, a gallon. Now a gallon, Columbia is metric, so a gallon is five litres. So ten thousand divided by two divided by five, that's two pound. <laughs> For five litres, that's a pretty good price. <laughs> so I'm not a big gas guzzler. Hey. <laughs> so green fanatics either so okay. I can all right. Got away with that, did I? Right. Uh, so yeah. Um I, I, First, you learn the first time round, yeah, big car. The other famous product from Colombia begins with C, <laughs> coffee, excellent coffee. Um, I tell everybody at work that uh, I bring back several kilos of Colombia's finest. <laughs> well, I do. <laughs> Uh, I, I normally go, I don't have a coffee grinder, so I, I buy the, um, the ground stuff and the best way to keep it is actually keep it in your freezer, it lasts for years, so keep it in your freezer, freeze it. And can you taste the difference? It, yes. Okay. It, it tastes, tastes better. Mm. Uh, well, certainly the way, I mean, order bags you better than, um, I forgot about a coffee, than... Um, <laughs> than that you it's, it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, What was yeah. this again? Coffee, coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet that, I think. <laughs> So, and they have lots of, um, well, I come to Scotland and we'll have all these distilleries, you know, these distillery visits. Well, in Colombia, the fin coffee fincas, fincas a farm, type of farm. Okay. And you can go and visit all the uh, the coffee farms now. You pick the berries and roast them, and grind them, and everything else, and the whole process. So it's just like the equivalent of a Scottish uh, distillery too. Mm. It's good. But co coffee is good, very cheap, good. I mean, this is top quality Juan Valdez. Uh, it's also uh, a range of shops, so like you have Costa and uh, all these type of coffee bars. Over there, Juan <laughs> Valdez is the, uh, the their, their own home, Colombian equivalent of that. You buy coffees, cappuccinos, espressos, whatever, cakes, brownies, whatever. Good, good stuff. Famous Colombians. Right. Anyone know who this is? That's correct. He's a cyclist. He won the Tour de France. Yes, first Colombian. And also, what else? Youngest ever? Youngest ever to win the uh, Tour de France. Do you know what his name is? No, he won, he won against. Oh, who was it? Was it against? Oh. Who is he? No, I remember what. Egan Bernal. You're wrong. From a city uh, just to the north of Bogota called Zipaquira, which has a, has a salt mine there. And uh, inside the salt mine, they built a cathedral. So you walk away down about half a kilometre, a kilometre, and they've, they've cut out this big cathedral. And it's a good place to visit. So, what again, the uh, cyclist. Like, what was that to happen? <laughs> Somebody said, that, what should we build in this salt mine? I know. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> quite, quite strongly religious. A lot of, a lot of South America. Fair <laughs> okay. Uh, doesn't really like tennis or golf, but there is a famous Colombian tennis player. Usually gets in the top tenish, and a golfer gets in the like, top tenish. Can't remember their names. Who's this? He was playing in the English league fairly recently. Not the last World Cup, the one before. He got the golden boot for the most goals scored. 
No. Nope. James Rodriguez. He's a Colombia's top player. But he was out the last um, one, he would, the last World Cup, he was injured, so he didn't, he didn't play, unfortunately. My personal favourite is going to be a. It certainly is. <laughs> About six years ago, um, my wife asked me what I wanted for, birth, for my birthday, and I said, Shakira. <laughs> you're still married. I, 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 well, she's Colombian. If it was Beyonce, I might have got slapped in the face or something. Um, or Rihanna. Um, but um, no, I've got DVD. <laughs> so, oh well. Don't ask, you don't get it. Yeah, slap in the face. So, okay, maybe um, Colombia is not as bad a place as you think. Maybe you want to go there. I've uh, I've been in and out of Colombia so many times. I'm probably on the watch list of a, at least a dozen countries. <laughs> For some reason, my baggage keeps getting inspected. <laughs> the, very, uh, the, the, the very first week, every every checkpoint, so you go in, uh, check in your bags, and you got your carry-on bag. Excuse me, sir. We've got checked, and then you put it through the scanner. And then before you go on the plane, I got randomly checked again and coming back the same thing. An interesting story. Um, one that there's a number of ways of getting get there. Well, one way is you can go via the US. Uh, and I remember uh, transiting the US. Uh, it's not a pleasant experience. And uh, there was one of the. Um, the uh, border guards or whatever, the, 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 the sniffer dog in the carousel was going round and he was making sure the dog was going up and sniffing everything. And um, so some tourist went to pet the dog. Oh. So the handler put his hand on his gun and says, step, sir, step back from the dog. <laughs> <laughs> so that was quite a clear signal. <laughs> For me anyway. <laughs> so no, don't, don't, don't. <laughs> Don't play with the sniffer dogs, they're, they're there to work, okay? And the handlers won't, won't uh, look like that. This is the route I've went most. Uh, if you're going there, my advice, buy a single ticket. Don't buy a ticket from one place on one airline and then another ticket somewhere else on another, because if things start running late or falling apart, it, it's a mess to sort out. Uh, buy a single ticket that says Edinburgh, on start and Bogota finish. And if something goes wrong, well, it's that. They, they've got to sort it out for you. You're not chasing up somebody because they were late and the other one left on time, but you missed it because they were home. Air France, um, pretty good service, actually. On the certain on their international uh, routes, pretty good. Uh, and you, you get a, a connecting, a small flight from Edinburgh to Paris, and then that, that's maybe about an hour and a half. Uh, Paris to Bogota is 11 and a half hours, so it's a, it's a pretty long flight. Is that any Charlie or was it early? Pardon? Is that any Charlie or early? Edinburgh, Paris, Paris. It's uh, Ch Charles de Gaulle. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's the one I've done the most. Uh, it can be the cheapest. There you go, the chickens again. <laughs> no, um, no, this is good. Um, this is another reason. Uh, I'll mention that in a minute. Another route, you can go KLM, you can go to Edinburgh, Schiphol, Schiphol, Bogota. Um, this, this is all pre Brexit days. Kind of referring to. You can do United Airlines. Uh, I think they're restarting again next year. Uh, obviously, I haven't been there for two years. My wife's not seen her family for two years because all the COVID. Uh, and it goes Edinburgh to New York, to Bogota. I don't like going transiting the US because they make you go through, first of all, immigration, then you go collect your bags, then you go through customs, <coughs> then you gotta go back and check your bags back in. And it's, it's a complete nightmare, it really is. The, this is a lot slicker, all your bags, uh, and skeeple as well, all your bags were automatically routed for you. So you just came off uh, one plane, and then back in, back you go, you do go back to security and then back into the uh, departure lounge at the, at the other terminal or whatever. Uh, it's pretty slick, but uh, this this is this is horrible. Uh, and going back in through the security, oh dear. 
What kind of money, Norman? Come to that. <laughs> uh, another route you can go, which I've never done because it's usually the most expensive. Uh, this, these three I've done, this one I've not done. You can go British Airways, Avianca, to, uh, from Edinburgh to either London, Madrid, and then London or Madrid to Bogota. No matter, Rob, you can afford it. <laughs> Travel time, um, a little bit 14 to 18 hours. Uh, that, that's from like leaving Edinburgh to Gira, set foot in Bogota, it's about that, includes of transit time. Is Avianca their national carrier? Yeah. Uh, it is, yeah, they've got a couple. Uh, there's, there's another one, um, Latam as well. Oh, uh, yeah. I think that, I don't think that's actually, um, I think. That's not Colombian, that's another South American one. But Latam, um, obviously with this all this political correctness, I can't tell you that they are the best looking air force stasis. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <right>. uh, <laughs> in my opinion. Uh, there are other routes available. You can go from here to there to there to Texas to wherever, but um, you can do it cheaper, but you, you, you're looking at uh, maybe three, catching three planes and the whole thing taking 23 hours uh, to save a hundred pounds. No, I just, I just want to get there. <laughs> uh, stepping off the plane at Bogota, you, you're going to get hit with three things, okay? You've just been on a flight for 11 and a half hours, so you're knackered. You've just had five hours added on to your day, so you're knackered again. Mm -hmm. And third, remember the altitude. <laughs> so triple whammy, you're absolutely knackered, and it does take maybe two or three days to start feeling normal again. <laughs> if you book five, six months in advance, you can get a return ticket for about seven hundred pounds, which is I think it's not bad. If you leave it to maybe one or two months before, then you look at a thousand pound, twelve hundred pound, maybe more. So if you are going to go, book in advance. You don't need a visa, except if you transit um, US, you need one of these mini visas, or ESTAs they call it. Uh, the European Union are about to do something similar, or where until COVID broke, for transiting uh, Europe. So we've got that to look forward to soon. Uh, the ESTAs about, I think it's about, 12 or 13 quid, maybe a bit more, depends on the dollar rate. I think it was 18 dollars or something to charge it. It's valid for two years. It's fairly painless, to, you can do it all online, but it, um, it's another 18 quid onto your flight price. I'm go with my family, so it's times four. Uh, so, no visa, and you can stay for uh, up to three months. Okay, so. We want to go, we know how to get there, we want to do some radio when we do arrive. Call sign I had up at the beginning, uh, Hotel Kilo 3 stroke, Mike Mike Zero, Bravo Mike Golf. I was told by several people that's illegal. And one person was quite stroppy about that was going to report my to Ofcom. <laughs> it's nothing to do with Ofcom. HK3 is a license issued by the Colombian Radio Authority. It doesn't matter what comes after it. What they were getting at was issued, what, what, what they thought should be signing as is HK3 stroke M0 BMG, not MM0 BMG. And that is correct if you're operating under TR611 or TR6102. Uh, with this, you can operate in any country that's adopted it for up to three months uh, with uh, their call sign stroke, your own call sign, but you drop the regional locator mm -hmm. in the UK. But not in Colombia, they don't, they, don't, they don't know what that is, they don't know what that is, they don't care. You need to get a license issued by the Colombian uh, regulator called MINTEC, or the Ministry of Information Technology and Communications. And it's not too painful. It's all done in Spanish, so that, that's probably going to be your biggest biggest challenge if you don't do any Spanish. So Google translates pretty good, and if you have a spouse who speaks Spanish, it's uh, even better. Mm. So she help me out. 
But the good thing is, you can do it all online from here. You're not waving some post office or some bureaucratic official look for a backhander <laughs> to stamp your whatever it is. How much does it cost? Well, this is the, the prices uh, a few years ago. They're about 30,000 uh, pesos now, so remember, 5,000 pesos for a pound. So 30,000 divided by, or 30 divided by five, it's about six, seven quid. Mm -hmm. And that can be, this, this uh, category here can be valid for up to um, uh, one year. So that's the website you need to go to if you want to just kick this off. And there's a number of options. Uh, because mixed in there is the different classes of license. Um, we've got advanced, primary, and secondary. Uh, they've also got a couple of CV type licenses, uh, club licenses, renewals. There's all sorts of things in there. But it's option eight you want, which is for a foreigner applying for a temporary uh, license. But temporary can be up to a year. Uh, that's what it says. It just means if you're a foreigner, um, you, you can apply uh, if you're transiting the country or staying temporary. So if you've got a full class UK license, fairly simple. You can apply for uh, an advanced class in Colombia for up to a year. Uh, but bear in mind um, that you only, unless you have a visa, you only get 90 days. So they might ask, well, why are you got a license for um, a year when you, you don't have a visa? You can only be here for 90 days. So. So that may or may not be a, a problem, but I, I found Colombia to be quite bureaucratic and uh, the, the, uh, the greasy Pam uh, syndrome I've seen uh, uh, that in action. Uh, with my brother-in-law getting a, an MOT for a clapped out banger. I thought, no way this car's going to pass. <laughs> the wheel bearing was grinding away. Uh, uh, anyway. Yeah, but uh, yeah, no, no, you got your certificate. <laughs> the glove box had money, and now doesn't have money. <laughs> uh, so if you start that, so you submit it all online, send all the documents you need, and I'll, I'll go through what, what, what it is. Um, it take, takes about two, three weeks actually. It's quite quite fast. This is a bit blurry, it didn't uh, print too well, but th th there's my name. Uh, there's this, this is my online record, uh, advanced class, uh, when I applied, and the, the reference number there. So, what do you need? Well, you need some kind of, you need, uh, well, if you're Colombian or resident, you, you'll have a, uh, an identity card, they call it a cedula. Uh, anyone else, you need to copy your passport and photo page. So, get that PDF'd. You also need the first page of your license. Now, I uh, I had an old version of that which said MM zero BMG, so I applied using that as my home call sign. If you've got M hash BMG, then you might not get away with that. Okay, so if you do have a, an old copy of that, remember it's valid for life. Keep it. Keep it valuable. Otherwise, you, you need to sign as M0 instead of MM0. You also need a Spanish translation because remember, it's in English, French, and German. That's it. <laughs> There's no Spanish on it. <laughs> uh, must have lost the vote or something when they've done that. But uh, so you need a, a Spanish translation. Uh, I need a receipt for the payment, which is to uh, the government bank account, which is the Davienda Bank. Uh, there's a number and you, you'll get a receipt for that. But again, you can do it all online, money transfer. The other thing you have to do, which you don't do here, is go to any 
radio equipment, and by that I mean transmitters or transceivers, you've got to register them. They've uh, got civil wars and all sorts of things going on there. They've got uh, various um, pharmaceutical entrepreneurs running around. <laughs> uh, all yeah. kinds of things. I register all their equipment. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> So they're, they're a bit tight, uh, and anything you you, um, you take, you, you've got to register it as part of the license application. So that, well, what it is, like if it's a, an icon, model number, serial number, you've got to register it. Uh, go through customs when you arrive there, no problem. Just uh, went in with it, asked what it is, went through the X-ray machine, picked it up, and that was it. No, no problems and coming back the other way. I've since actually left that there now, but we'll see what I'll show you what I've left. Uh, but I've left my radio there with relatives, so uh, it saves my cart and stuff. It's another bag, it's another bag so that they'll charge you maybe £70 for uh, an extra bag. Mm -hmm. so you need to carry on and you get your check in, and the extra one's going to be £70 quid or Air France. So you attach all these documents online and uh, press go, or uh, whatever it is in Spanish, can't remember, it's not Siga, it's something else. And remember to apply for advanced class, okay? And I'll, you'll see why in a minute. May or may not affect you, but anyway. They've got full license, so this is, um, this is what a, a foreign, a, foreign resident Colombian identity card looks like. So this is what I use. Although, as you can see, that, that's about to run out next week on the 13th. Uh, I haven't been had another chance to get that renewed. But for, for you, you guys and girls, it'll be a, a, a passport. So there's the, it didn't come out very well, but that's the, uh, that's my light. That's the Ofcom page one with the MM0 BMG on it. That's the back there. That's the receipt for the payment. So that gets PDF, and that forms part of your pack. So you get notified by email, and if it's all successful, uh, you, you get a couple of things. You get a letter stating that the application has been successful. And you'll, um, which is this, I'll pass it around, because this is out of date now, I've been there for a couple of years. And you'll also get the actual license document itself. So you can pass that around. It doesn't come laminated, I laminated it, just to, I'm going to carry that with me whenever I have the radio equipment with me. Uh, remember we're talking about driving, there's lots of checkpoints, police and army, and uh, you stop. If <laughs> they stop, stop, otherwise you're going to get lead poisoning. <laughs> I think you have to flush that customs when you go through with your gear. Um, I, I had it already, but I never bothered. Just it went through the X-ray machine. You know, next, <laughs> it's it was so. I mean, I was when I first went to Colombia to uh, meet my girlfriend there at the time. Um, I was sitting on the plane wondering if I. Wasted money by their return ticket. <laughs> was, it, was it going to make it home again? But um, no, it, it's uh, because of the reputation, but it's really not as bad as you think. And if you stay to the tourist areas, it's no worse than going to any anywhere in Spain or Germany or Italy. It's, it's not that bad. Yes, there are areas to go to uh, that you'll never be seen or heard from again. If you go to the Foreign Office website and look up Colombia, it gives you a whole list. The fact that once you finish reading that, yeah, that could well put you off, but it's it's not that bad. <clears throat> Bogota, over the last ten years, has had less um, terrorist attacks than London. Okay, so you know, keep it in perspective. Uh, stay streetwise. Um, we're talking about the uh, Trans Millennial. So I usually have a rucksack, but when I when I go on the Transmillennial, I take off my back and I put it on the front. Uh, I've got a wallet or back, it's in a zipped pocket, or it's in the truck sack that's on my front. Uh, so, you know, stay street wise, it's fine. 
That's why I keep my bag of mouse traps. Why do you ask? <laughs> <laughs> The other thing you need to do, it's a bit, bit like our license, you know, you've got the front sheet, which is your, your license, and then you've got all the terms and conditions and rules and things, and that, that, that's the same uh, Colombia. All in Spanish, of course. So that's basically what I'm just passing around, that's the, the letter. Uh, so this is an older one. So basically what it says is use Hotel Kilo 3, stroke, and then my own call sign. And I submitted as my own call sign, MM0 BMG. So that's what I'm authorized to use. Not M0 BMG. Why would you use an English call sign anyway when you're on road? Exactly. Yeah. That's what I told them. Uh, occasionally <laughs> I get asked if um, English, or oh, Escocese, Scottish, ah, whiskey! That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, the only word in Scottish that knows whiskey, apparently. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's that. That's C. Yeah, I'm gonna go about it. That that's the first page of the, the license regulations. I can't remember it. Twenty odd pages. Quite a bit. Of it. All, all in Spanish. Ah, it's we we be on my level of Spanish. We pick out the odd the odd bits. Like maximum power. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come to that. Remember I said apply for advanced. Yeah. We'll get there. So in the UK, if you're in different regions like Scotland, England, Wales, etc., SEM0 or MW or MI or whatever, uh, they don't use letters, they use numbers, depending on what region you're in. So Bogota is in uh, Cundiamarca, so it's Hotel Kilo 3. Another thing, when you apply for your license, you need an address in Colombia, you need an address. So that might be a bit tricky. I've got, I've got plenty of relatives there. For me, it's easy. So maybe that's a hotel you're staying in or something, but you need an address. Maybe if you get friendly with a local amateur, you might let you use his address. But you need an address when you apply. Um, so I also applied for the family's got a farm in Boyacá. So I've also, um, let's go back again. <clears throat> So I'm licensed, as you can see from that document, I'm licensed for HK3, so that's capital, it's in Kundamarka, and Boyacá is uh, 7, so I'm licensed for HK7. Uh, commanders town in Boyacá, uh, family farmers. So here we are, anything stand out there that looks interesting? Yeah, 2,000 watts. <laughs> what was this weak, feeble 400 watts nonsense? Yeah, two kilowatts. But even that's oh, mobile. <laughs> but, but, oh, but even oh, oh. even like the middle standard one is still 600 watts. Oh, yeah, that's your, yeah. So I said there three categories: second, first, advanced. So apply for advanced. To make sure, yeah. I mean. There's not many two kilowatt amplifiers around. There's, there's a few solid state ones around now that are starting to come, but they're, they're quite you know, there's about five, six thousand quid in a, in a bit. Um, the biggest problem you'll have actually you generating this. Lights on, you? <laughs> well, the biggest problem you'll have is the voltage, 120 volts, yeah. and drawn enough current to get two thousand watts. If you get two thousand watts out, you're probably at nearly four kilowatts in. You're going to be struggling. Draw that from the electrical power supply. It's quite a low power output, though. It is, but um, yeah, it seems to like uh, taper off. So two kilowatts, two kilowatts, hundred watts, fifty, fifty, ten. Uh, but remember that there's probably not much to be done there apart from mobiles. Remember, Colombia's full of mountains. Mm. So I went and what did I take? Well, I took a, I had a 706 Mark II G yeah. and I got it wide banded because remember they're in region two IR AU, so they've got wider bands. Mm. So uh, I got that more money back, so it's fairly easy in those sets. Uh, and it was it had the SSB uh, wide and narrow filters fitted, a little extension speaker, uh, 
DC power supply, make sure it works on 120 volts. And ones that aren't auto detecting, make sure you switch it. Uh, going over there and running it on the lower voltage probably won't be too much of a problem, but when you come back, <laughs> remember to switch it back when it might go bang. Uh, I took with me one of these super antennas. Uh, probably see Martin Lynch sells them. Uh, the good thing about those is they'll fit inside a suitcase. So you get the tripod and the antenna mm -hmm. in there. I brought a little handheld analyzer for checking the VSWR. Uh, it's a bit fiddly to tune those, those antennas. I'll speed up a bit. And uh, the Samsung Galaxy and a mobile phone that was for internet connection and for logging and stuff. Oh, and of course, uh, whenever you go anywhere, or most places outside the UK, then there's sockets, power sockets are all different. So take an adapter. Mm, so there's the uh, super antenna. So it looks like, and this is just one of these flight cases. Uh, I, put, I bought a couple of these straps on because I've seen the, uh, the New York baggage handlers in action. And the, the <laughs> <laughs> they're big. Big people and the this fling stuff around like anyway. I want that bursting open. But there was the other thing I'd say is don't lock anything because they they they'll they'll get in and they'll break the lock. So I never suitcases at anything, I never bother locking it. So point if they want in, they'll get in. So there we go. 706, extension speaker, a microphone, DC read. 10 meters of RG58, and underneath there is the, the DC power supply, switch mode power supply. So that case and everything in it, it's, it's in Bogota. The super antenna I brought back uh, home with me. Did you check that in? Or did you check it in his hand? No, check that in. Right. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't have any problems. Like I said, though, the, the security, the, the, they'll all open up, look inside. Especially, especially electronics, it's a dead set, mm. so there's no point uh, trying to lock it. So what I'm going to got there, I bought a mains lead with the, the American type plug on it, uh, and a mains extension cable. The light trips, uh, in fact, not, not, not just South America, but North America as well, shocking, this is the standard. Uh, the, this, this is not double insulated, these cables, it looks like speaker cable. <laughs> uh, and the American plugs are very loose when they plug them in yeah. and they just feel loose, they're horrible things. I had an idea actually, instead of having um, instead of having a half a dozen adapter sockets, I thought, why don't I just stick a plug on a normal mm -hmm. extension lead and that's what I've done. So a mobile phone, charger, the power supply, uh, and what else did I have going? Uh, I want something else plugged in, but uh, I think I'll see them one go at one time. Oh, and the, the tablet charger as well. Uh, so, so the, the fact there's a trip, if you go to any queer to love 30 amp, just, just buy a local plug, take one of those, take the 13 amp plug off and put one of theirs on. And this is rated for 250 volts, so 120 yeah. should be okay. And this is double insulated. So it'll save you buying dozens and dozens of uh, adapters. So where did it operate from? La Viena, Bogota, sounds fancy, but I refer to it as the swamp. And that was HK3 call sign. And I was only doing listing there. And then to command in Boyaca, so that's the HK7 call sign. I did a little bit of operating there. The, the, this wasn't a radio expedition, this was a family holiday primarily, and then the second was visiting family, and then third, maybe radio. So it means electrical supply. All of the Americas, 120-ish, <laughs> ish, <laughs> at 60 hertz. Uh, yeah, electrical safety is not good. And oh. uh, many dwellings, never mind PME, they just don't have an earth that's, uh, you get a hot and a cold, yeah. or what we call light and neutral. I think hot's white and cold's black, if I remember. So this is the old type. <laughs> is that good? Is that... <laughs> the new ones have an F connection now. 
Uh, one's slightly bigger than the other. The bigger one's the, the hot or the live. So you can get a knife into it. This is an electrical, <laughs> this is an electrical wow. shower, um, main shower, um, South American style. Yeah, I've seen them in Peru and Bolivia and the They're horrendous. Uh, you're probably thinking that's not safe, but it, I'm, sure, I'm sure it's can't be that bad. Look, look, they've even got a miniature circuit breaker. <laughs> okay, the humidity was seized, I couldn't switch it off. <laughs> so it probably would never trip, but uh, uh, well, at least they tried to tie it on with plastic uh, tape. <laughs> um, if, if you go back, well, I don't you probably see oh, it. Oh, is that the other Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, was that well, a four-star hotel or the five-star hotel? <laughs> I you probably can't see it there, but you can see the, um, there's actually a bit of copper sticking out there. Uh -huh. I've seen that in this country. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I was on the shower once, uh, and the reason I have went to town on their showers is so I'm on the shower, <laughs> and you're, you're absolutely covered in water. And okay, it's not two thirty; it's one twenty. But bloody hell, I'm, I'm glad I went to the toilet before I had the shower. <laughs> that, that was not uh, not a pleasant experience. So. Uh, yeah, this was all corroded as well. I, I don't know why, because it's a plastic enclosure. You don't really need an earth on it as such. I'm not in this country, but anyway. It's, uh, and again, the tape's all fallen off. And it's just like twisted on. <laughs> they don't use corrector block or anything. It's just twisted on. And they wrap a bit of PVC tape around it. Uh, and, and I don't know what that's for. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. But the supply is taken from a light fitting, that's a porcelain light fitting, so it's taken from the light in the circuit. <laughs> I was talking about hotels being pretty good, yeah, a lot, lot better. This is um, my father-in-law's, one of his flats that we get for free, so I can't complain too much. So when I get there, I'm mainly paying for the flight, accommodation's free mostly, and food's dirt cheap. But the electrical safety, shocking. This is another one, this is at the farm. And this is all, actually, this is all started burning and falling off. Because the, 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 the gauge of wire wasn't thick enough for the four kilowatts or whatever this thing runs at. And this is this gold pipe, the gold feet comes in here. You turn the tap on and it detects and must switch on the heating element. But, uh, uh, yeah. It's uh, scary stuff. So this is me operating, this is La Riviera in the west side of Bogota, in the uh, terrace. Sister Law's house, so yeah, laptop, speaker, there's a set, it's on top of my box, power supply there. Uh, feeder cable, and I think one of those is a radial as well from the super antenna. There's a super antenna. This is a barbecue. Uh, they've got a roof on it, so they have a sliding panel, so all the smoke from the barbecue goes straight up. Uh, and I just hope that's the antenna up. <laughs> they're not, they're, I mean, they're not efficient antennas, but they fit inside a suitcase. And that, that, that was the primary reason I went for it. But I've since now got wire and insulators to make up dipoles. This is the family farm, uh, Bendicamada. So we're up nearly 10,000 feet. Well, you, you know it. I mean, they don't, they, they're born there, living there, they're running around, and there's all these gringos wheezing and puffing and flaps <laughs> inside the road. So sort of looking at me strange. <laughs> and this is the road. Uh, it, uh, in fact, most of the roads are like this or worse in Colombia. This is like the garden, this is like the drive of the house. So I was operating this room here, and the antenna mounted up there. You can see the, uh, the low voltage supply there. Yep, that is in fact a sewing machine. <laughs> <laughs> Made a nice tea. I had to clean out this room. It was absolutely manky. Uh, power supply, laptop, mobile phone for the internet. There's my antenna analyzer, which is the antenna. And there's a the set. Yeah. And what was the QRM like from the uh, domestic? Uh, well, I, out there, it wasn't bad. Yeah. Even the city with all this massive overhead wiring and rats' nests, it, it wasn't too bad. It, it's, Probably not that much worse than Edinburgh, <laughs> or some places in Edinburgh. 
So there's a feeder out the window. They all, they all, all the doors in the houses, they tend to use steel doors. All the internal doors are steel as well. And everything's triple, quadruple locked. So there, there, there is quite a bit of heat that goes on. Is that in case they don't enforce it? People are like, <laughs> no, 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 They've all got this one dog, and you go for a walk around about here, you go, rah, 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 boo, 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 bah, 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 as you go past all the houses. So there's the antenna on the roof, a little ladder to get up, super antenna mounted there. There was one day where it started getting lightning, and uh, I was up there like a rocket taking all that down <laughs> pretty quick. But I, I just, uh, I ended up just tilting it on its side, <laughs> taking the top bit out and just leaving it. Side and disconnecting the, the feed inside. Uh, big sparks, big lightning out there. Uh, yeah, pretty typical of the equator. Can't see it too well, but this is the main road from uh, Bogota, way down to the south, to Tunja, further to the north. And there's a view looking back at it from the other, the other side. Of the How did it perform that antenna? Pardon? How did it perform? How did you go on with it? Not sure yet. We'll come to that, context. Um, not too bad. So there's the um, so, so middle of the SSB section, a reasonable VSWR from it. It's, it's quite a small antenna. Mm. I reckon in 20 metres it had about minus 6 DVD gain. Minus 6. Minus 6, <laughs> yeah. What was the bandwidth like? It wasn't too bad. You've you got you to adjust it a lot more. You saw it there, actually, if we go back. Um, 1.5 uh, range, I can't remember what range I've got in that, but uh, it doesn't, doesn't tell you, it tells you this. it's what 1.5 used to be on the that frequency, but it's fairly flat. You can get about 100 kilohertz or maybe a bit more in 20 meters, which isn't bad because there's probably quite a bit of inductance in there. So the call signs I got, uh, my second trip to the radio, that had the radio is HK3 MM0 BMG, HK7 MM0 BMG, uh, and I set all those up in Q, if you QRZ, you'll, you'll get a little bit of information, I think it says, it probably says uh, I'm out of the company just now, I'll, I'll let you know when I'm coming back or something, if you, if you look it up, then there might be a couple of photographs as well. So I'd, I'd start logging direct on EQSL as I, as I went, nothing fancy. Uh, I had like a, an Excel spreadsheet. And I wasn't working uh, DX100, I was just having a bit of fun. Uh, and I monitored to try and get contacts with the people back here. I, I monitored a, an IO group for the club uh, set up to arrange schedules, but that, that wasn't very successful. This is why. Um, this is about 2018. Uh, so the, the so just, just about hit the bottom of the sunspot cycle. So for, for 20 meters to go, what I found is that this needs to be up about 20 megahertz for, to, get, to get this to go. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I did work was uh, Jamaica, Florida a couple of times, Montserrat, Canary Islands, which were my best DX, so I mm -hmm. back east, uh, and Brazil. Now, if I was in Edinburgh and I worked those, I'd be, oh, oh, oh pretty good. But over there, that's just, well, apart from Canary Islands, that, that's just single hop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's just locals. It's like, oh, bloody hell, another Italian. Oh, no, no, no Russia, no, oh, dear. So nothing else. But uh, for me, that, that was really exciting stuff. So there we go. Any questions? So are you going to go back next year? We well, were hoping to go back this year because the Boris... Uh, scrapped his red list. Mm. Jimmy Cranky agreed to it, so um, <laughs> uh, we nearly we nearly went, but uh, because we're booking so close to the time we're flying, that the prices were about thousand, just under a thousand quid times four, mm. so that's four thousand pound. So um, no, but um, yeah, ne next year if things are a bit more stable, certainly we'll try and book in advance. Come back next year, mm. and I'll get these call signs resurrected. The mm. licenses run out. Couple of years ago, you have some big antennas up at that farm as well, eh? 
Uh, that's what I'm hoping for. So uh, there's, there's the real um, identity card. But to, to get that, you need to get a resident visa first. So I'm going to go through all this process again. Uh, my resident visa runs out next week. But, but, but as I say, you can get there for 90 days without a visa. Well, then, will they let you renew that at the consulate? Yeah, well, I can do it, do it via the consulate in London, or it's probably easier once I'm in country, just to the flats what I've done last night. Did you hook up with any local amateurs at all? Yes, I did. Uh, HK3CW guy called Roberto Rea, uh, Rey, uh, who was at the time, he was in charge of the, uh, the president of the Colombian National Society. Mm -hmm. And they do have a, a website and a Facebook page as well. Who's the guy that's we work on six? So it's always on six meters from Bogota. Oh, HK3, what's his call? Oh, I can't remember. I can't remember. Big gun station always pushing yeah. around on six, isn't it? Well, you, you saw the power of it. <laughs> that's right, I know, eh? The, they don't mess about in Colombia. They probably knew that from watching Narcos. <laughs> <laughs> Many thanks for all that, it was really yeah, fascinating. Yeah. So it's 